Gout occurs in people who have high levels of urate in their blood. It occurs from a combination of diet, other health problems about which we will discuss later on and also by genetic factors. At high levels, uric acid crystallizes and the crystals deposit in joints, tendons, and surrounding tissues, resulting in an acute attack of gout. As urate levels build up our body gets rid of it through kidneys. But if body is making too much urate, or kidneys are unable to get rid of extra urate, then levels start to rise. Actually gout is a form of inflammatory arthritis characterized by recurrent attacks of a red, tender, hot, and swollen joint. Pain develops on rapidly and reaches to maximum intensity in about 12 hours. In gout joint pain usually begins in the night. The joint at the base of the big toe is affected in about half of cases. Long-standing hyperuricemia may result in other symptoms like hard, painless deposits of uric acid crystals known as TOFI. Extensive TOFI formation may lead to chronic arthritis due to bone erosion. Elevated uric acid levels lead to crystals precipitation in the kidneys, resulting in stone formation and consequently urate nephropathy. Gout occurs commonly in those who regularly drink beer or sugar-sweetened beverages or who eat foods that are high in purines such as liver, shellfish, or anchovies, or in people who are overweight. Gout can also occur because of genetic predisposition, or under-excretion of urate. Under-excretion of uric acid by the kidneys is the main cause of hyperuricemia in approximately 90% of cases, while overproduction is the cause in less than 10% of cases. Gout commonly occurs in combination with other medical conditions like, metabolic syndrome, obesity, hypertension, insulin resistance in diabetes, and in high lipid levels. Other conditions commonly complicated by gout include renal failure, hemolytic anemia, psoriasis, and myeloproliferative disorders like polysemia. Gout may be diagnosed and treated without further investigations if someone having hyperuricemia and the classic acute arthritis. Plain X-rays are usually normal and are not useful for confirming a diagnosis of early gout. But in advanced disease they may show bone erosion. Remember synovial fluid analysis should only be done if the diagnosis is in doubt. A definitive diagnosis of gout is based upon the identification of monosodium urate crystals in synovial fluid or atophis. Under polarized light microscopy, they have a needle-like morphology and strong negative birefringents. While in blood tests, hyperuricemia is a classic feature of gout. But nearly half of the time gout occurs without hyperuricemia. And it is also seen that most people with raised uric acid levels never develop gout. Other blood tests commonly performed are white blood cell count, electrolytes, kidney function and ESR. While talking about differentials, the most important differential diagnosis in case of gout is septic arthritis. Other conditions that can look similar include pseudo-gout, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and reactive arthritis,
while talking about medications. The initial aim of treatment is to settle the symptoms of an acute attack. Treatment with nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs NSAIDs, glucocorticoids, or colchicine improves symptoms of acute gout. Others treatment of acute gout include interleukin-1 inhibitors, such as canakinumab. And while in those with frequent attacks, allopurinol or probenicid provides long-term prevention, Allopurinol is generally the best preventative treatment. Allopurinol blocks uric acid production, and is the most commonly used agent. Pabuxistat is only recommended in those who cannot tolerate allopurinol. Probenicid appears to be less effective than allopurinol and is a second-line agent. Thanks. Like and subscribe our channel for next coming videos.